Hello everyone, Phil here doing another video. In this video we're going to have a look at some storage solutions for retro gaming PCs. We're going to look at uh, MS-DOS but also Windows uh, 95 and 98. Now what I'm doing in this video here is basically sharing my uh, personal experience. I've worked with a lot of computers, 386, 46, socket 7, uh, slot 1, socket 370, socket 478 and this is really just uh, a chance for me to share what I found, what works for me, what glitches have I encountered, yeah? It's not meant to be uh, a rule that's set in stone like you, this is the best solution because results results vary. You might have a different motherboard, different BIOS, different chipsets, and also you might have different parts lying, lying around at home, you know? Um, I always encourage, encourage that you use what you've got at home, makes uh, your life easier, and also saves a ton of money. Okay, we're gonna start with this storage solution. It's called SCSI or SCSI. Um, personally, I don't have too much experience with it. I've got, this is a, just a typical SCSI controller and I've got a SCSI hard drive. I don't even know how big this hard drive is. It's fairly, it's fairly old. Um, SCSI is pretty, uh, it's not, not a bad solution for DOS. Um, you will need a driver, so it might take up a little bit of your memory. You also need a, a PCI slot, so it, it takes a bit of resources. In general, SCSI drives uh, are known to perform faster than similar sized um, PATA drives, but they're also a bit on the noisy side when they, they were used to running workstations and servers. So me personally don't have much experience. Um, it should work okay as long as you've got drivers for your operating system, be it DOS or Windows. And of course, because this is a period, period correct hardware, um, reliability might be an issue. Um, but otherwise, not a bad solution. Although I have to stress, personally, I I don't uh, use SCSI at all. I'm more into the PADA and IDE drives. Okay, next up we have period correct. ID or part of drives. So I've got two drives here. Let's have a look. This is a Seagate Barracuda 80 gigabytes and I've got a Western Digital here. I think that's a, a 20 gigabyte. Yeah. Now these are period correct hard drives. So just like with the SCSI drives, what are the downsides? Um, noise and rel reliability basically. Um, What's good about it? Compatibility is fantastic. Um, you shouldn't have issues with BIOS limitations and uh, capacity limitations because they're period correct um, and most BIOSes support the hard drives of that size. Um, in terms of performance, um, not too bad. They're obviously not as fast as some of the modern uh, solutions, but they do the job fine. They're fast enough. Enabling DMA in uh, Windows 98 shouldn't be a problem. You just tick the box and you're ready to go. Um, I've got a few benchmarks uh, where we can have a look at how they how they stack up, and we will uh, compare some of the benchmarks uh, with the other drives um, down the track. Now, the other benefit is if you're getting uh, complete uh, systems like second hand or something, usually they come with drives, so chances are you've actually got an old ID drive lying around. So if it still works, it's fine. So main thing, not as fast, uh, but fairly cheap to be had. Come with uh, w with systems that you might saw secondhand, but a bit on the noisy side and reliability might be an issue. Okay, and next we come to a very popular storage solution, the good old compact flash card. So. Um, these are basically pin compatible with the IDE standard, so it means that the controllers, well not really controllers, the converters are actually really cheap, a couple of dollars and you've got one of them. And there's a jump on here, we can jump it, right master, master slave, there's a floppy power connector and this port goes to your motherboard. This is actually one of those that goes in the back in the slot and there's an, also an activity indicator. So what's good about this solution? Um, great for small capacities. Um, you can get compact flash any size really. And the smaller ones are actually quite cheap or you can get them second hand. Especially if you've got to do, if you've got anything to do with photography, you, uh, chances are you've got one of these 
lying around. They are fantastic for MS-DOS um, because MS-DOS not really writing a lot. It's mostly reading once you've copied everything uh, onto it. So for MS-DOS, they're really, really good. And probably my preferred choice for MS-DOS, although the uh, solution, which I'm gonna talk about soon, um, is, is probably even my, even more favorite. Um, well, in terms of capacities, once you go up to the higher capacities, prices start to become quite expensive. So if you're looking at the 64 or the 128 gigabyte size, then it's actually cheaper getting a, a modern hard drive and, and using uh, using methods to make it compatible with the older machines. But uh, small capacities, absolutely no, no dramas. Under Windows 95, 98, these are not that suitable. I mean, they work fine. If you've got nothing else, then, then uh, you shouldn't have any major problems. But in terms of uh, writing speed, especially um, writing uh, small amounts of data, they're not, uh, they're not very fast. So they're good at reading uh, and they have basically no access time. So very, very fast access time. But in terms of writing, um, they're better solutions. So for DOS, really good solution. For Windows 95, Windows 98, I would probably not um, recommend this option. Okay, and here we have modern SATA drives. And a couple of options, you can go with notebook drives, various sizes. I've got note laptop drives from uh, up to one terabyte and the smallest ones around 250 gig or you can go with desktop drives again capacity is all over the shop I've got a 500 gig this is a brand new two terabyte from Seagate um, this is an older 640 gigabyte and basically a really wide range of capacities and laptop and also uh, laptop drive uh, laptop drives as well as uh, desktop drives. Uh, personally, I use um, uh, I use them on my test benches, but if I use a case, uh, I usually put a hard drive bay at the front where I can just eject the hard drives because I, I work so much with my hardware um, and I pref I'm a sneaker net guy. I, I prefer unplugging the drive and putting it into my desktop into a USB docking station uh, to do cloning or copy files onto it. Okay, so obviously the old uh, motherboards don't have any SATA interfaces, so you need some form of a conversion from the SATA interface um, to your motherboard. And we have basically we have two options. You can go with um, a SATA PCI controller, or you can go with um, SATA to PADA ID converters. So let's have a let's have a look with the uh, PCI SATA controller. This is a silicon image. Let me just wait till this zooms in. Okay, here we go. So it's a silicon image SATA link and it's a 3112. This is a two port um, SATA adapter. And the other one here, this is a four port SATA adapter. So the only difference in the model number is the last digit. So the two, uh, the 3112 is a two port and the 3114 is a four port SATA adapter. Now, I used I used to recommend these a lot, and, and uh, I used to use uh, PCI SATA controllers quite a bit, especially under MS DOS. But when I started to play around with Windows 98, I ran into a lot of issues. And um, the, the the problem is that you need to have a you need to find a controller that is compatible with the new hard drives, which are usually uh, SATA 3 or SATA 2 standard. So it's got to be compatible with that, which means it's got to be fairly recent, but it also has to be old enough um, for drivers for Windows 98 to be available. So, and that's a contradiction. That means that at some stage, um, the PCI SATA controls will be too new and there won't be any uh, drivers for Windows 98. These still, these have drivers for Windows 98 and they also have various um, bias, bias versions you can flash. Um, they work under Windows 98 just fine. So when you when you first install it, it comes up in Device Manager with an unknown device, and you install the driver. The only thing which I couldn't get going was the DMA mode. Uh, DMA is quite important. It just means that it frees the processor when it's doing data transfers. And if it doesn't have DMA, it basically means you have the processor works a lot, and the speed you're getting out of your hard drive is actually very very average so I was unable to get the DMA mode going however 
there is apparently um, another controller chip from the same company. Um, I might just uh, put a picture in the video. And that is supposedly enabling DMA on its own. So if you're using one of these, you won't have a DMA checkbox under the hard drive. The driver of the controller has to enable DMA by itself and I was unable to do so. Now, if you were able to uh, achieve DMA on one of these controllers, please let me know. Um, I'm especially interested in what bias did you use with your controller or what bias do you have on your controller and exactly what driver um, did you use. Otherwise, benefits are that you can use large capacities so these because they have a bias chip that means you're not stuck with any bias limitations in terms of sizes you can put in a two terabyte drive and they will detect it just fine and then you just basically partition a, a smaller create a small partition that's compatible with your operating system okay and that brings us to the last option which are SATA to ID uh, adapters or converters. So these have uh, SATA on one end and give you IDE on the other end. So basically how this works, you just uh, line it up, plug it in like that, and you basically now have a, an IDE drive. So if you mount it into your case, you can use your uh, Moldex PAL and there, there's your IDE port. This particular model also has a jumper for master and slave but not every model uh, has that now I kind of I found two models basically um, I found this one was ha which has a, a J micro uh, chip on it and then I found this one not quite sure what the brand behind this chip is but I'll, I'll put in a picture um, zoomed in enlarged of that chip if you choosing between these two Although J Micro is, is kind of the better brand, this one is actually the better product. Um, firstly, it gives you the Master Slave jumper, which is very handy if you just want to use one hard drive and one CD-ROM drive on one IDE cable. That actually works really well. But the main benefit is that this allows you to enable DMA mode in Windows 9.8 with more drives. This one is a hit and miss. Sometimes it works, uh, sometimes it doesn't, and uh, once you tick the DMA box, it actually uh, stuffs up your machine, um, whereas this works with more drives. So very quickly I gave up on this product, and I'm now exclusively using this one. And I think there's a model number on here as well. There you go. Let's zoom in. JP103-5. Um, pretty easy to spot on eBay. Just look look for the jumper and what 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 and the layout of the PCB and shouldn't be any any problems. Okay, so what's good about this solution? It works with a wide range of machines. I've tested it with all sorts of machines and very good uh, compatibility. Also very fast. I've got some benchmarks um, on a on a Pentium 3 machine and also on a Pentium 3 with the uh, Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz processor and the Intel 815 chipset. So basically, this will go as fast as the controller, as the RDE controller lets you. So there, there is no uh, drawback in terms of performance. So this is as quick as it gets. Um, so the hard drive is the limit or the uh, controller interface. Now, capacities, because these hard drives have large capacities and we are we are using the onboard ID controller we are relying on what the bias um, and, and, and the chipset supports in terms of what capacity you have and there are a couple of options if you if you've got a Seagate hard drive um, you can use this this is it's called C tools it's a, a bootable uh, program so you boot the disk and you can set you can limit the capacity now I always Go with the 32 gigabyte option but i want to stress that you don't have to go with 32 gigabyte you can turn a two terabyte drive in any into any capacity drive so if you want to have a 128 gigabyte drive you can do that if you want to have a 60 gig drive you can do that want an 80 gig drive no problem all you have to do is type in the number of uh, sectors i believe um, each one is 512 bytes so a bit of maths um, and that gives you how many uh, is it blocks or sectors? 
anyway there's a number you have to you have to type it in pretty straightforward now if you don't have a seagate hard drive there are a couple as well as there's one other option you actually you don't have to limit the capacity you can do it another way so let's say you're grabbing uh, one of these yeah two terabyte hard drive brand new you got it for the shop from the shop or let's say a 500 gigabyte hard drive because you find that 500 gig hard drives actually very cheap and might be cheaper than getting a high capacity compact flash drive or a solid state drive yeah so you've got you've got a brand brand new hard drive you're using the id adapter and then what you do is you go into the bias and you just do an auto auto uh, scan for the hard drive and whatever capacity pops up is the highest uh, capacity that the bias supports i tried um my uh, a open slot one motherboard and also tried a super socket 7 motherboard from gigabyte and from dfi and they all identified these hard drives as 137 um, gigabyte it's really 128 uh, gigabyte it's to do with how how the manufacturers uh, calculate uh, capacities yeah but basically you save those views by settings and then you just partition the hard drive with those settings and format it so um, it doesn't really matter if it's a two terabyte or one terabyte drive the bias detects it as 128 or 137 you load your f-disk you partition it you format it you install windows 98 and there you go you've got your 128 gigabyte hard drive so you actually don't need to limit the capacity um, as long as you aware that you don't go beyond uh, what, what the bias um, supports so this is the option i use uh, exclusively now with all my machines uh, very fast dma mode works flawlessly um, i also like that you can use the modex powers which modex power connectors which uh, allows you some some really cool cable uh, management and yep that's really it so that was me talking for a while um probably not the most interesting video but hopefully quite useful um, because storage is always an important decision when you're building a, a, a retro uh, gaming computer and hopefully i gave you some ideas and, and maybe i helped you out as always subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so spread the word hit the like button any questions comments feedbacks just leave them down below i'm always happy to to hear from you and check out my website philscomputerlab.com um, any any utilities to do with this video i might put a page um, on my website where you can we can go and download for example c tools and other bits and pieces